Round two of the playoffs, which means the stakes only get higher. Week 12 of Football Friday starts right now. Welcome to another postseason edition of Football Friday. It's presented, as always, by Donato's Pizza. Remember, you can get involved tonight. Call in those scores, 262-1400. I'm Eric Elkin. He is James Ryder. Kick off this week's show, like every week, with our next level game of the week. And once again, Divisions 2, 3, 4, and 6 all in action tonight. 1, 5, and 7 tomorrow night. We've reached the regional semifinals. Ten local teams with a chance to reach a regional final tonight. Now it's a place Trotwood is very familiar with, having been to the state championship game each of the last four years. But it's a different story altogether for Bellbrook, which is in the playoffs for the first time since 2004. Bellbrook, big underdogs in this one, but it was clear at practice yesterday. The Golden Eagles believe they can pull off this upset. And this is your ideal start to do so. Second play of the game, Messiah DeWeaver, the Michigan commit, looking for Delquan Young. But it's picked off by Sam Martin. But Trotwood's defense has been so good all year long, much like Bellbrook's. Alex Prime and intercepted by top 22 selection, Key Beckham. Why? And he's just going to do what Key Beckham Why does. Why would you throw to him? I and don't know. Pick six. How many, James? Five. This is his Five fifth pick, pick six. sixes. Fifth pick six of the year. Rams take a 7-0 lead. Later in the quarter, Breland Cosby. One-yard touchdown run. Trotwood up. 14-0 after one. Second quarter, a long punt return would uh, for Trotwood set up the offense deep in Bellbrook territory. And DeWeaver will find his target this time. Young, 27-yard touchdown. Trotwood up 21-0. Then later in the quarter, DeWeaver, well, he already threw one through the air, so why not keep it on the ground this time? Well, it looks like he actually wanted to throw it this time, but he's going to use his speed, find the edge, scores from one yard out, and the Rams took a 28-0 lead into the half, go on to win big, 41-6. We prepared and practiced all week, watched uh, great film, great coaching this week, and um, you know we came out and tried to execute our, our game plan, and that's what we did early. Bellbrook played a great game, get it hot off to them. They came out, them guys, they, they set the tone, the line of scrimmage did well. So we got to go and figure out what some of the things that we got to improve on as offense, defense, and special teams. So once again, Trotwood in the regional final now, the sixth straight year. The Rams have reached that point, but who will they play? Well, that's going to be the winner of Wapakoneta and Tippecanoe. Wapak has yet to lose all season, rolling through the Western Buckeye League. Meanwhile, though, Tip is looking for its second straight trip to a regional final. Last year, it was the best season in school history. A win would give the Red Devils a rematch with Trotwood, but first they must take down top seed Wapakoneta. Redskins are wasting no time. Keaton Metz gets the ball. Nice pickup there. Then it's the bruiser, John Eaton, bullying his way for the first few plays later. Redskins with some trickery, giving it to Adam Henderson. Gets to the edge, 7 0 Wapak. Now we head to the second quarter. Tip on the drive. Zach Blair scrambling, and he finds Jacob Prawl first and goal. A few plays later, then it's going to be Austin Crack taking it in for the score, but that wasn't enough. Wapak goes on to win. 28 to 7. So here's a look at the Division 3 Region 10 bracket. Wapakoneta in the regional finals for the first time in school history. And they'll face a very good and very dangerous Trotwood team that's looking for a fifth straight trip to state. And I have a key for Wapak don't throw at Key Beckham. Probably a good idea, and I like the play on words. In Division 4, Region 14, it seems destined to come down to Alter and Clinton Massey. Since 2006, the Knights <laughs> are 104 wins. To 12 losses. The Falcons 105 to 11, but they've only met twice in the playoffs in that span. And this year, Clinton Massey, though the only one of the two that's had a close call, they had a three point win against Chillicothe. Aside from that, each team has won every game by 21 points or more. Alters beating opponents by an average of 37 points per game. Clinton Massey winning by 45 per contest. Just ridiculous. I was going to say ridiculous myself. In the way of Alter, a Wyoming team which has only lost once this year, but that came to a McNick team. Alter beat 49-0. Halfway through the first quarter, Dusty Hayes throws deep. Chris Fink with the catch. What is Alter doing throwing the football? They run the ball. Well, they throw it every once in a while, too. Alter's next drive, Dusty Hayes fumbles. The snap in Wyoming recovers. Wyoming able to capitalize off the turnover. Andrew Marty runs it in for the touchdown, and we got ourselves a ball game. Midway through the second quarter, Dusty Hayes, what is going on? They're throwing the football again. Down the middle of the field, Dylan Dax 
with a nice gain on that play. And on the following play, Hutt Hayes throws deep in the corner of the end zone to Mark O'Neill for the touchdown. All of a sudden, Alter, an aerial machine. And they go on to win 42 to 28. Now, Eric, you mentioned Alter beat McNick 49-0 earlier in the year, and that's who Clinton Massey had to get by to face Alter. Now, early in the game, Clinton Massey, they were loving that running game. Hunter Fentress tossing over to Davey Tunyon, and the Falcons get the first down. Later that drive, Falcons with a yard to goal. Hunter Fentress easily gets in 7-0. End of the first, late in the second. Falcons again with the ball. Little trickery here. Hunter Fentress gets the ball again to Davey Tunyon. And then he goes in for the touchdown, 14-0 towards the end of the half. But Clinton Massey wins 28-14. So for the second straight year, James, the Region 14 final will come down to Alter and Clinton Massey, despite both teams getting tested tonight. The Falcons beat the Knights last year in this game. They've won the last two state championships in Division 4. Well, coming up on Football Friday, Tri-County North looks to keep its magical season going, but West Liberty Salem had other plans. Division 6 highlights next. Welcome back to Football Friday. The historic season keeps getting better for Tri-County North. First outright CCC title since 1994. First ever playoff win last week. But now the top seed faces a huge challenge against West Liberty Salem. And the Tigers have never lost to a CCC team 6-0 all time. But these two teams have never met. Tri-County North gets the ball first. And on their first play, Dustin Green, <laughs> I've been coughing a lot lately myself, coughs up the ball. West Liberty Salem recovers and the Tigers take advantage. Trevor Anderson, this is a ridiculous run. He can't be stopped on this way. Just zigging and zagging, couple of good blocks, couple of missed tackles, and then he just drags everyone into the end zone across the goal line. That is a heck of a run from Trevor Anderson. Tri-County North though answers back. Colton Booth, kid's got style, right? Or is it the other one? <laughs> no, they it's both have style. He even fakes out our camera guy, then finds Blake Lawson in the end zone to tie the game. West Liberty wouldn't be deterred. Brandon Upton launches it deep. Cameron Evans wide open for the easy touchdown, giving West Liberty Salem a 14-7 lead. And West Liberty Salem hands Tri-County North its only loss of the season, 21-14 the final. Minster and Versailles are two programs that have a very proud tradition, combining to win seven state championships. Now granted, the Tigers of Versailles have six of those, but this is only the second time since 2006 that they're in the playoffs. And the Wildcats of Minster, they're making the fourth trip to the postseason in the last five years. Now Minster's been the better team the last few years, but Versailles clearly has the edge in history. They meet tonight at Piqua, and top 22 selection Eli Wolf was exceptional this game. On fourth and five, Wildcats go to him. That's the first down right there. And a few plays later, Josh Nixon, QB sneak, and it's a 7-0 Minster lead. Now on the ensuing possession, it's third and 10, and Nixon just going to run it again. 15-yard scamper puts Minster on top, 14-zip. Now in the second quarter, Versailles finally answers. Jared Neekamp to Jace Bargy. 22-yard connection makes it a 14-7 game. Now Minster comes back down with another good drive. Kept by Sam Dews, punching it in from two yards out, 21-7. And again, Wolf, so many big plays on both sides of the ball. Can't show them all because of the limited time, but here he gets an interception. That leads to a field goal before the end of the half, and Minster rolls 45-19 over Versailles. So that will set up a regional final of West Liberty Salem and Minster. West Liberty Salem will be in search of the program's first ever trip to state, Minster trying to go for the first time since 1989. Our scoreboard brought to you by Castle Roofing. We're actually going to look ahead to tomorrow. Big slate of games we'll be getting. And we start with the only team in our area left in Division I. That is the Wayne Warriors. They'll be playing up in Bell Fountain against Dublin Coffin. The winner of that game will move on to play the winner of a huge rivalry game between Lakota West and Lakota East. Those two teams knocking off Centerville and Springboro last weekend. Some more uh, games we'll be getting tomorrow. Greenview looks to keep its magical season going against CHCA. If they win, they will move on to play the winner of Baden and West Jefferson. And then from there, we stay in Division 5. Coldwater looking to make another run at State. They have a rematch of last year against Huron. And if they win that, they would get the winner of Marion Pleasant and Finley Liberty Benton. And in Division 7, Marion Local keeps the, try, looks to keep the winning going like usual against Fort Recovery. Troy Christian 
We'll try to keep its season going against Lehman Catholic. Well, coming up, another busy Saturday in high school football, as we mentioned. We'll actually look ahead to tomorrow and talk about some of those upcoming matchups when we come back. Welcome back to Football Friday here on Fox 45. I'm Eric Elkin. He is James Ryder. We showed you all the playoff games from tonight, but it's another busy slate tomorrow as well. Five games in total with local teams playing, including the only remaining team in our area from Division I. Wayne will play Dublin Kaufman at Bell Fountain. Last year, the Warriors won 31-10 in the second round of the playoffs. And this year, Wayne is even better on the defensive side of the ball. Last year, the Warriors allowed more than 21 points per game. But this year, with 9 of 11 starters back, Wayne is holding foes to less than 10 points per contest, and that defense could be the key. We're playing together, and that's, that's the most important thing. You can have all the talent in the world that you want and, and all that, but uh, they are playing together. And when, when they play together, that's exactly what they can do. And, and they're feeding off each other. Their chemistry is great. Doug is back delivering tonight's food from Donato's Pizza. Box. Tonight, yeah, it really is. You can put anyone in there, not just food. Doug, tonight, Doug brought us two of their amazing new double bacon pizzas. Jeff Booth is all about that box. He said his kids are going to play in it later. Uh, the pepperoni <laughs> double bacon and the jalapeno double bacon. I'm not kidding. Each pizza includes a healthy portion of hardwood smoked bacon plus lean diced Canadian bacon. Doug tells us that their double bacon pizzas have been fantastic. In fact, the Dayton area, in Donato, uh, the Dayton area Donato's currently leads the entire Donato system in the amount of double bacon pizzas sold. The double bacon pizzas are available for in four sizes for just a dollar more than the price of a regular single topping pizza, making a double bacon pizza from Donato's a great deal. Tonight, Donato's also delivered a fresh garden party salad and party order of boneless wings. Donato's can help feed your office team or friends watching the Buckeyes, Bengals, or Browns on TV. In addition to great pizzas, Donato's can provide oven-baked subs, party order sizes of wings like you see there, and salads, drinks, and fantastic desserts like this really great looking dessert apple crisp timpano pizza. All delivered party orders include plates, cups, napkins, and condiments. To set up your next party order with Donato's, just email catering at DaytonDonato's.com. The Donato's catering specialist will promptly work with you to make your menu perfect for your next meeting or party and that great looking timpano on sale with any pizza purchase for just $3.99. Only from Donato's Pizza where the difference is delicious. You can win a $50 gift card to Donato's Pizza right now. Just text 2245 football to 45203. Winner will be contacted Monday for every text you send. You win a $5 coupon, so text now and win instantly. Still to come on Football Friday, tonight is also the college basketball opener. Both Beauty and Wright State starting the season in their home gyms. Highlights next. Time now for our Meyer Play of the Week here on Football Friday. Comes from our Game of the Week, and it's something you don't want to do, and that's throw towards Key Beckham. Call it Key Island, I guess. Beckham returning it for the pick six. He's only done this four other times this year. Five pick sixes on the year for Key Beckham. James and I have come up with a scouting report. Do not throw to Key not Island. Not one, not two, not three. Welcome back to Football Friday, presented by Donato's Pizza here on Fox 45. But tonight... Also, the start of the college basketball season. UD and Wright State both opening the 2014-15 season at home. And obviously, a ton of anticipation to see what the Flyers had for an encore to their Elite Eight run. Flyers 41-4 in home openers, welcoming Alabama A&M to UD Arena. Flyers sharp right out of the gate. Deshaun Pierre, basket and the foul. He finished a rebound shy of a double-double, 16-9. Should be a big year for Scoochie Smith. He had a hot hand early, couple of threes, nine points, eight assists, five rebounds, just one turnover. And this may be Scoochie's best assist on the night. A little no-look dime here to Devin Scott, nine points, 12 rebounds for Scott. Daryl Davis, high scorer of the night in his debut, 17 points for the freshman. UD cruises to a 76-52 win. Wright State opening up with a tough Belmont team, which has been to six of the last nine NCAA tournaments. Now his tight game throughout Grant Benzinger, the freshman from Moeller, three ball ties the game at 42 early in the second half. Now he didn't have a great stat line. He can't put several big plays down the stretch. Later, Justin Mitchell, nice find underneath. Roderick Davis, not quite a dunk, still counts the same. Now a bit of a sloppy start to the second, but the Raiders clean it up. Reggie Arsenault, more like Reggie Arce, yes. Ties the game back up at well 55 with 10 to go. I know, Eric, you love that. 
that. And Krishan Hopkins, he led the way for the Raiders. 21 points. Wright State edges Belmont 73-70. Greenview grad Evan Brad also with 21 for Belmont in the loss. Now in the women's game, Wright State beats Austin P 85-73. And Dayton's in action right now at Washington State. Flyers trail 40-25 to at the half. Wednesday was signing day for many sports, including basketball. Well, this morning at Wayne High School, Zarius Williams and Ahmad Wagner had their ceremonies for their signings. Williams isn't going far. He'll don a Flyers uniform next season. He was in the building tonight. He signed in, a, in front of a huge crowd this morning, which he wasn't expecting. Well, I was a little surprised the whole school came out. You know, I thought everybody would have been, you know, happy to be in class, but, but everybody came out and I, I enjoyed that. But it felt amazing, you know, just signing and getting it out the way and just officially knowing that now that nothing can stop you from being a Flyer. Meanwhile, Ahmad Wagner had a lot of lot to weigh. On top of being a highly coveted basketball player, Wagner started getting Division I football offers this fall as well. But ultimately, Wagner decided to stick with his original commitment to play basketball for Fran McCaffrey at Iowa. It's hard not to think about uh, all the football schools coming at you. You know, something I had to listen to and everything. But I knew in my heart was it was in basketball, and I stayed true to Iowa. Iowa was the best thing for me. Um, they've, they've been there since the day one, since they started recruiting me. Coach was on me really hard, and he seemed like he was real interested in what I had to offer. Congratulations to both of them. But our scoreboard brought to you by Castle Roofing. In case you missed the top of our show, here's a look at the scores from tonight's playoff action. In our game of the week, Trotwood beats Bellbrook 41 to 6. Trotwood will move on to play Wapakoneta, who beat Tip 28 to 7. Some more scores for you uh, from earlier in the show. Alter edges out. Uh, Wyoming, I say edges, that's one of their closer games this year, 42-28, and they will face Clinton Massey in the regional final who beat uh, McNicholas 28-14. And then in Division 6, a little bit of an upset, West Liberty Salem edges Tri-County North 21-14, and Minster, they just came out beginning to end 